in Slack and we'll bring Robin in uh, to give his talk. So All right. Thank Sounds good. Thanks, everybody. And hi, Robin. Have a good talk. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. All righty. Robin, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, this is Zeke Week 2021, and it's day three. And Robin Summer, who is our technical lead uh, and the CTO at Corelight, uh, he's going to be talking about the Zeke Roadmap and how to contribute uh, to it. So with that, Robin, the floor is yours. Have a good talk. Thank you, Amber. I need to unmute myself. Um, yeah, and thanks, Richard, for that, that great keynote. Um, on, that, on, on those logs, there's actually a, a nice story behind how the current uh, format of the logs came into being with 2.0, including that connection ID. So maybe we can talk later about that in the, the Q&A session. Um, and the credit goes to Seth Hall there. Um, yeah, so I'm, I'm Robin Sommer. Um, I've been, uh, I do have some history with the project. I actually, I think I started working on, on Zeek in uh, 2002. It's been a while, I know. <laughs> uh, no jokes about age, um, still going. And um, it's exciting to see the, the Zeek community growing so much. And I think over the years, we have really been able to uh, move the system forward. And, and as, as Richard said, um, um, been fortunate enough to to establish um, like these transaction logs in this terminology um, really as a, as a good standard format for network monitoring. So that is, that is great. Um, so in this talk, uh, I'm going to talk about um, the development roadmap. So I'm, I've been leading the development team for, for, for many years. Uh, and in that role, um, I get to do this presentation as well. And those who have been at Zeek Weeks before um, or Brocon in the in the past day, they know it is a bit of a like traditional presentation, which is also um, a bit misnomed actually, because roadmap. It, you know, to be honest, we don't really have like a strict roadmap. Um, it's an open source project, so so um, um, for and for a roadmap, we would need a lot of planning and and, and, and detailed scheduling and stuff. So in, instead, um, we. Um, operate like like many open source projects in the in the sense that um, um, people are interested in working on stuff and 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 jointly we, we look at what it's what is necessary what our users are looking for and what do we believe uh, makes actually use uh, makes much um, as value to seek so in that sense I'll be talking in this this talk about um, features that we as the core development team are currently working on or we plan to do. Uh, work on soonish. Um, I'll say rather high level, um, which um, unfortunately I apologize turns this talk a bit into a laundry list of, of stuff, but there will be follow up presentations going into. Um, oh, is there a headset problem? I'm I sorry about that. A little bit of, we're hearing some static, uh, like every other sentence or so. Okay, give me a second and I'll try something else here. How's that? Is that better? I'm not hearing the static now. Um, but can, you can understand me, okay? Yeah, but it, it sounds kind of like you're in a, a cave kind of thing. But again, I'm on the speakerphone now. But I so think it's it, better than the static. Static is better. Let me ask people in the channel. Uh, what is better, cave or static? I think it's better without the static, even if it sounds kind okay. of cave. Okay, so then I do the cave. Okay. <laughs> there you go. So for our presentations, we'll go into more detail on a number of, of, of these, these things that I'm going to talk about. Um, generally, you can also track actually um, what we're working on pretty well through GitHub, because we, we have set up projects. I will talk a bit about more um, later how you can find that, but the quick uh, starting point there is a wiki page which links to the main uh, uh, milestones. Um, the standard disclaimer for this talk is always this, nothing is really cast in stone. Your plan, our, our plans internally uh, and externally may, may, may change, and they do change usually. And um, again, we, um, we basically contributors bring their own ideas here and their, their own preferences. So I see on Slack the cave is fine. <laughs> Um, so let me get started on, 
um, the actual stuff. So maybe just a quick reminder for our uh, version numbering scheme. Um, so, so currently our current feature release is, is the 4.1 series. So that is like the cutting edge of, of stable functionality. It is a stable version. It's not a development version, just to be, be clear on that. Um, and 4.2 will be coming next about the end of the year is the current schedule. Um, we do, so for, for a little while, we have been doing the LTS releases, which we maintain um, uh, for a year. And that is currently the 4.0 series. Um, which will be superseded eventually by the 5.0 next year. But, but basically, people on the LTS track um, will have this uh, stable version that we maintain with bug fixes and, and most importantly, security fixes for a year. So let's look at 4.2. Um, so that's the version that is coming. And um, again, I'm just going through this pretty quickly because um, there's not much time. Um, so so we, we will continue a bunch of themes that we have been working on for a while. So there's um, uh, Tim has been overhauling the complete packet processing pipeline internally um, over the last uh, couple of versions, I guess, uh, primarily, which means that Zeek is now no longer tied to actually the uh, TCP IP protocol uh, uh, stack, but is able to analyze protocols um, uh, of any format of any um, uh, layer two and layer three uh, protocols. Um, we don't have much, make much use of that yet, but it's in principle that, that the infrastructure is there. We kind of uh, turned around how internally it works. And the final pieces for this is that we are moving tunnel over into that new into that new structure and making the notion of what actually uh, constitutes a connection in ID, uh, a connection in Zeek more configurable. Um, another thing, so in 4.1, we added um, support for telemetry collection and exporting uh, into Prometheus, actually. So that is there, but it's, it's currently a low-level interface. And um, the, for 4.2, um, we're hoping to add like the script level side to that so that people can more easily use it. And uh, Seth will be talking about um, this uh, actually only briefly in one of our lightning talks today. And I should say that the packet processing um, pipeline overhaul Tim is going to talk about. Um, the cluster controller is something that Christian started working on a while ago. And for 4.2, um, we hope to have there a version ready for, for uh, people to try out and, and provide feedback. And what this is, is, is essentially, eventually, it, it's something to replace the control as the new management framework for uh, Zeek installations, in particular for Zeek clusters. So Zeek control is just uh, showing its age at this point. Um, so we have uh, lots of thoughts on, on how we could do that better. And, and we're actually looking for, for people to tell us if that is, that is the right approach. So Christian will be talking about this quite a bit later and um, show you what that all means. Um, script compilation is something that, that Vern has started to add in, in, in 4.1. Um, I don't know how many people have, have, have noticed this, but, but if, you, if you read the news, um, it's actually uh, Zeek now comes with a compiler of Zeek scripts to C++. It's still experimental, um, but essentially it allows you to take a Zeek configuration with all the scripts and turn it into C++ code and then compile it right into Zeek. For 4.2, um, there's a a second compiler coming to the to Zan, the Zeek abstract machine. Again, something Vern's working on, which uh, provides a different approach to that. And he's going to talk more about both of these um, later. The, 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 the um, important part here, I think, to keep in mind is that, that this is experimental functionality. So we explicitly keep this out of our maintenance guarantees for the time being, because it's still in flux. And, and generally, whatever is experimental or marked as experimental um, sees a bit less of that. Um, um, timely attention that we usually for important problems um, put into releases. Um, we have uh, just recently started to provide Docker images for Zeek, which is essentially provide, take the, the standard tools, Zeek itself plus like the standard tools around it um, that come with the, a normal Zeek installation and pre-installs that into uh, a Docker image for everybody to use. Um, we have this Docker Hub account, uh, we had that for a while, actually. Um, there wasn't much there uh, other than spicy so far. Um, right now, there's a Zeek dev image, which provides um, the, um, the current uh, nightly build. It's, it's integrated in CI, but it's updated nightly. And, and in the future, we will also be pushing Docker images for releases there. Um, these Docker images are meant primarily for, for trying out Zeek, so get to, to quickly get it up and running and, and, and run some stuff. It's not meant for operational use in the sense it's not tuning the, the, the I don't know, the packet capture stack or stuff, and it's not installing a bunch of tools you might want around Zeek. So what you can base your own stuff on that. 
the hosting location you might still change because Docker Hub unfortunately doesn't provide any any free hosting for uh, open source projects. So we are still figuring out if that is the best location for us to stay with. Um, TLS 1.2 decryption is about to go into uh, Zigmaster at this point. Um, I believe um, that is an external contribution um, that, that Johanna is shepherding in. And um, it basically, it requires you to provide the session keys um, for, the, for the TLS communication to Zeek through various means, either in scripts or a broker or the input framework, I believe. And then it can decrypt um, those sessions in the future. Um, we have been extending the, the plugin API. Um, or we are working, I should say, we are working on extending the plugin API. Um, um, we have had the doc test, unit testing framework for C++ built into Zeek for a while now, uh, but it's not yet accessible to plugins. So that they are working on that. There's an open pull request for that one. Um, we also um, are about to add two new hooks so that um, plugins can get to packets that are not otherwise processed by Zeek, which is kind of an interesting question what exactly that means. Um, but we, we believe we have a pretty good idea on, 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 on how to define that. And the second hook, which allow, will allow to provide Zeek script content, uh, not from files on disk, but from memory, uh, which eventually, or which in the end, uh, depending on what a plugin wants to do, could, for example, allow providing the content just out of the binary itself. So it's, it's basically on our quest to make Zeek extensible to external plugins. And one, for that one feature I just wanted to mention really quick is, um, I don't know how many people have noticed that you can now build plugins statically into Zeek itself, rather than having that shared library externally. And there's something uh, Seth will actually be talking more about. Um, we're always working on the code base. Um, there's a lot of uh, C++ modernization that went on recently. Uh, Tim primarily has been working on this quite a bit. Um, there's, there's more. We now have a Clang format configuration <laughs> for, for, for those um, who are used to actually using Clang format for, for getting the, the code structure right. This is a huge relief. And we just recently ran this over the whole code base. So you actually, um, for if you have an old branch lying around, you will have some trouble, unfortunately, merging that in because there's a bit reformatting um, across essentially the old files. That was probably the largest, I think it was the largest uh, pull request ever, touched touch the most files. Um, we are working to extend the coverage of our sanitizers, and uh, the, the, in particular, the undefined behavior sanitizer that's coming from the LRM project. And also, we would really like to just, uh, replace that DNS code that is currently in Zeek, um, which was more in a more modern library there. Um, we have, of course, a number of sub-projects around Zeek. And, and while we not always tie the release timing or numbering to Zeek itself, we usually plan like with the same kind of time frame for those. So and for the Zeek package manager, uh, Christian is going to talk about um, templating that he added to it that um, allows people to uh, easily bootstrap new packages. And that could be Zeek scripts, that could be a plugin or a spicy analyzer. I'll talk about that uh, in, a, in a moment. Um, it could also, it also brings uh, improved dependency management, which actually makes it much uh, more uh, viable to have packages depending on others and getting the testing right in particular. Um, speaking of spicy, so spicy is, um, for those who don't know, is a new parser generator that we have been working on for a while. It's, it's replacing Binpack, the current parser generator. So the, the motivation here is that it's really hard to pass all these network protocols uh, when writing C++ code manually. Um, so, and, and Binpack solved kind of half of the problem in that in sense that it produced a parser that could just pass the syntax essentially of protocols. And Spicy does a, a, another step which now allows you to add semantics to that as well, so that you do not have to write a single line of C++ code anymore to add support for new uh, network protocols or file formats actually um, to Zeek or other applications. It, it could even be used outside of the, the Zeek context. Um, so spicy has been uh, maturing for a while, I would say. It's, it's, I, it's, it's there at this point. It's uh, being used for a, a bunch of analyzers by, uh, by, by us, by other people. Um, and I think the, the feedback so far is that the model actually works pretty well in, in, in making, in really lowering the bar. It's not, still not trivial to write analyzers, but it's, it's, it's becoming easier. Um, the next release, which in this case actually will probably come out next week, um, comes with a lot of mostly internal optimizations in terms of the code generation that is um, actually um, starting to leave a bunch of stuff out that is not needed. So, so we have, um, uh, Benjamin has been working on, on that quite a bit to, to optimize that. And also the internal infrastructure for the ASTs is, is, is um, getting better. 
Um, and Benjamin added um, a way to use these new ZKG templates to bootstrap analyzers as well. And he will be talking more about all of this um, in a little bit. Uh, Broker is, of course, our communication library. So, and um, we have been working again for a while in this case on, on topic based multi hub routing so that you can actually build overlay networks um, of, of pretty complex structure where you can, where one node on one end of the graph can publish events that will show up on the other end. And that will allow us to set up much more complicated communication topologies in the future. Um, and um, that is. Uh, um, Getting, getting ready at this point, and it includes actually now um, a switch to a stable network protocol um, for broker itself, which will make um, um, compatibility between broker versions much more easily to achieve. Um, we are also working on Cathis, the, the underlying library um, underneath broker that actually does the communication. It's an external uh, library. We're working to hide that a bit better so that the broker API has, is no longer, uh, no longer uh, requiring a certain Cath version. Um, so that's all it said. So this is what is kind of on the near term roadmap. So for for the for the future versions, and I'm going through this real quick um, because I'm, I'm I'm getting short on time here. Um, so so we are, we are planning to to reorganize the standard library and 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 um, maybe uh, I think the standard script is probably something that has seen the, the least attention recently, and it shows. So there's really some some work to do there. So one thing we want to do is. We want to focus the core scripts really on, on infrastructure, basically what's currently the base scripts those that are always loaded. That is, that is uh, the part that will stay inside Zeek. But we'll probably start moving analysis and detection, like those policy scripts, over into packages. Um, we want to modernize and extend a bunch of, of, of frameworks, um, adding a new alerting capabilities, math education framework, better cluster state sharing, better health metrics. There's a bunch of stuff to do there. Um, people have been. Um, well, yeah, I would say people recently uh, are talking more and more about kind of a next gen logging API and, and, and format. And, and one way is sometimes just technically it would be nice to kind of delay logging a little bit so that you can add more information. But more conceptually, there's, there's this thinking that it would be nice if logs created like higher level narratives and, 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 and cross links between logs at a, of a different kind than just connection ideas um, to, to provide an abstraction um, above those transaction logs. Um, a bunch of language extensions are um, um, under discussion, I would say. So, so we, there's really somewhat embarrassing. <laughs> we still have done of a way to do unit testing in, in Zeek scripts. Um, there is a proposal out there, an external framework called ZTest. Um, some people think we just should start by adding like an assert statement. Um, it's also questionable how to actually drive Zeek scripts when they are under test. Maybe we need some kind of event traces to feed in there. So this is all under discussion. And, and we have we have realized it's not quite clear, actually, what unit testing for Zeek script even mean. So this is something where, again, feedback, as always, is, is, is interested and, and requested. Asynchronous functions is something which has always been on the, on the roadmap for a while. We have a prototype of that. Um, for the sub-projects, so the cluster controller, Christian will again be talking more about this. So, but there's basically a bunch of questions on, on how to get this deployed in, in, in large environments and how does it translate to cloud environments and containers? So um, that is an open question. Um, spicy integration is something clearly becoming now part of the longer term roadmap. So, and, and the goal is to make it really a core part of Zeek and the way to write Zeek analyzers, including porting the existing analyzers over. And there's a bunch of features we can start adding as well. I think error recovery is really something that we have been missing for a while. So what if a protocol analyzer uh, bails out and it, because it can't pass stuff, um, um, how can it then continue on that same stream? The Zeek agent is our endpoint agent um, that we would really like to actually move forward as well. There's a bunch of discussion on what the next version should look like there. Um, and I think we should really focus on, on simplicity and, and, and ease of use and deployment and, and helping Zeek. Um, so I already said, if you want to track development, GitHub, GitHub is our hub for uh, everything going on. Um, we have projects set up for, for the various milestones. Um, the Zeek repository is, in the end, the main one where you find most uh, activity, follow the issues, follow the PRs, discussions, um, look at the wiki for developer information and the developments channel on Slack off, Slack off pass. Um, if you want to help, and that is my last slide, um, 
first of all, feedback is is immensely valuable, always appreciated. So if file, file GitHub tickets, if you notice something that needs improvement, right? Um, comment on, on stuff that is out there already, tickets, pull requests, proposals, Slack threads, email or development list, start a GitHub discussion in the sense of GitHub's discussion feature, if you want to brainstorm something. And um, everything helps really. And, and the more we hear, the better. That includes, <laughs> just to say, positive feedback too, because if you really like something that maybe comes in a new version or so, let us know so that we know we're on the right track. If you hate it, let us, let us know too. Um, if you want to contribute, look at our GitHub wiki for the various processes and the contribution guide. We have, we have written up quite a bit of stuff there, how to get stuff um, over to us, both information and sense of feedback, but also in terms of code. Um, if you don't know what to work on, look for, for tickets. Good first issue is the label. Um, you can also just ask for pull requests. Um, if you have generally larger ideas you want to do, let us know and, and we'll help. If you're not a coder, last point, that is not a problem at all. Um, so as, as Amber already said, we need people who test. Uh, it's really challenging to uh, make sure that a new version of Zeek runs stably in, 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 in very different environments of all sizes. So the more environments we have willing to run early versions for us, the better. Our, our documentation always needs help. Our training teams, uh, our both the documentation team and training teams um, can always uh, pro, uh, um, uh, need input, or always need input. And if nothing else, help other users on Slack mailing list tickets again. Just chime in. Thank you very much. That was it, and I apologize for the uh, for the cave feeling. Robin, thank you so much.